<laughs> so that's it. That's all you need to know. So thanks for watching. See you in the next video. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. Uh, sometimes I feel like some of these shorts and all these different small content that we have going on on a lot of these um, videos is, uh, is like enough for a lot of people to learn exactly how to do things. And that's definitely not the case. This is definitely something that's going to take some skill to learn how to do. And uh, tonight I have a really special guest that's probably done more mud bed pans than I've ever uh, seen anybody do. Uh, and I'm really excited to introduce him, but we're going to get into uh, the initial setup of this, but I want to make sure that everything's right here before I get started. Unfortunately, I don't see my chat on here, so I'm going to see if I can get this um, going here. But um, yeah, thanks for joining me tonight. If you uh, give me a, a thumbs up on the video on the way in here, really uh, helps out the algorithm, get this out to other people. And I'm really excited to continue to do these live streams and make them a lot more um, uh, you know, a lot better, uh, you know, informative, you know, like these, like I was saying, these shorts, these little quick 60 second videos, that is not enough to learn how to do, go about doing this. But I do love the fact that you can get some ideas off of people very, very quickly. That's what is one of the great things. Like every day I'm learning something, uh, from another creator, because, you know, if you've been doing this stuff a lot, a lot, you don't necessarily need uh, you know, the full scope, the full explanation of everything uh, to be able to do this. So, okay, we got YouTube on and I think we do have Facebook. I don't know what's wrong with my chat, but this is really frustrating that they, um, this thing keeps going. But show must go on. So let's go into my um, teachable site here. But I did want to show you this is, this. we are in the actual studio or the, the bathroom that I'm doing. So we do have this whole mud pan uh, completed and that's the whole idea of these live streams. I'm trying to go along with the entire project and then have all this educational contact with it because you know it really makes it a lot easier for me uh, rather than rushing through everything and making sure that I get everything and all the feedback from people really does help out a lot uh, because then I'm able to you know teach better and make things better for you. So getting into uh, my course so everything is in the course at this point, and we're going to be kind of going a little bit, um, you know, ahead of things just because I have this special guest that is waiting to be on to discuss things and, and hopefully critique, and I can learn a couple of things from him. He can tell me a couple of things that I'm doing wrong maybe. But uh, in my course, so I have six courses right now. This is the seventh one being developed. Uh, right now you can get all the videos for this specific uh, basement bathroom in my DIY Geek membership. This includes all of my courses and everything's kind of interlinked together. So this is really going to be the best value, but most importantly, you're going to be getting all of my videos that continue to, or my, all my courses I continue to make. So over time, the value just becomes greater and the price will go up once I actually get this basement bathroom completed. But to show you the course of what we got so far, we basically have the entire um, location. We go over the layout. Uh, we go over the concrete removal, which is actually, uh, you know, can be pretty difficult if you're in an older home. Go through all the plumbing. So all the different aspects of running this plumbing. And that's one of the things about this linking to other courses is that, you know, not every plumbing situation is the same. So I do link my other courses uh, that show different demonstrations of different configurations. And over time, hopefully I'll be able to get majority of the situations. Basement bathrooms are definitely a little bit unique because you really, you know, you really have no idea what you're in for until you actually remove that concrete. Um, so, but um, yeah, um, yeah. So this was a curbless shower as you were uh, seeing there. And that's, uh, you know, that is made by design. I think it only makes sense to do that. Um, because, uh, you know, you are, you have the ability to remove that concrete, get everything, the substrate set to where you want to. And this is a small bathroom. It's only a four by eight bathroom. So it really makes sense just to take, uh, you know, have curbless, gives yourself a little bit more room. It feels a little bit bigger in there. Uh, and you don't have a curb to step over, you know, so it's really a, a win when it comes to that. But I want to show you this short video about setting uh, the, the actual drain, uh, which is, is something that the guest has uh, used many times. And I've been following him on how he uses it. And it really, uh, it's a tremendous drain. So I'm really, uh, you know, I've discussed that in pre previous live streams about, um, 
you know the uh, this this drain, but uh, it really is a is a great mud bed system, and I'm sure we'll get into more details on how all that works. So let's just watch this quick five minute video, and again we're kind of going ahead of ourselves here. We already have the heated flooring system down. We did our uh, floor leveler, as you can see. So now we're just sloping the actual pan itself. We'll revisit that maybe next week as far as the whole uh, heated flooring system. But I really feel having a heated flooring system is awesome for a basement bathroom because otherwise, you know, your feet would definitely be cold. So here. Okay, so next day, everything's all dry. We're gonna go ahead and set our shower drain in. Uh, let's get our boards out of here so that we can slope everything to the drain. Um, but one of the things that we're going to be using is a mud bed mix. This is a four to one sand mix. Uh, that's all you really need. Now you could go ahead and buy Portland cement and sand and mix it yourself. But I really find it's a lot more foolproof and easier just to buy a bag of this. Um, all your main manufacturers kind of make it. But you're able to add the... Yep, sorry. It's uh, glitching on me here. Let me just... Try that again. The right amount of water pretty <laughs> easily with this and get a nice mixture. So first thing, let's go ahead and remove our boards here. Okay. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and get our drain set. So we do have about an inch and a quarter, exactly where what we wanted here for the slope to the drain. So let's pull this spare pipe out of here. Okay, so this is going to be thin-setted pretty much all the way down to the floor because even with this little bump out here, we have about a half inch of room. So inch and a quarter, half inch, that's three quarters of an inch slope from our longest point. So we'll go ahead and cut this flush with the concrete. And honestly, I might just go ahead and use my oscillating tool on this. about a half inch. So this bottom is resting on there. Let's just take a look before I even glue it. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Looks good that way. All right, so we'll clean this up. We'll get a slurry coat down because we need to thin set the mortar bed to this. Boy, don't need any glue. When you're doing a mud bed, you want to bond it to the bottom surface. So in an upstairs bathroom or something, you can use a metal lath of some sort, have that stapled to the floor, or just simply thin set it into place. We're over concrete, so we're just gonna thin set it, use some modified thin set, and this is called a slurry coat. It's just basically the bond, the actual mortar to the bottom of the concrete. So we'll mix this up and get ready. Okay, so let's prep the floor in our drain. So we'll go ahead and just apply the thin set over our heated flooring system. Okay, so that's all we need there, just a bond. Get some thin set on the bottom of this flange. So what's really great about these flow flex drains is this waffle right here really kind of gives something to thin set the bond into. So I, I definitely really like these bonding flanges. I think they're really an excellent system. Primer around our drain. Oh my God, I can't believe I just did that. Oh, purple primer everywhere. Dang it. <laughs> All over my jeans. 
Yes, they were. Oh, I can't believe I did that. All right, so you just want to square this up, make sure that this stays square with the wall. And then just make sure that this is level. There we go, you want to zoom in on that. And then just make sure it's level this way as well. So everything looks good. That's really important so that everything slopes down properly. But again, just, you know, while this glue is still setting, just make sure that this is nice and square with your wall. Oh, I can't believe I did that. I think that stuff's burning, burning my skin. Oh, I bet it is. Pant change. <laughs> what a nightmare. I can't believe I did that, you know, and there's no sense in hiding that kind of mistake. Uh, it is what it is. So uh, before I further ado, I want to bring my guest on uh, because uh, he's been a mentor of mine for years. Really excited to have him on the channel. We've been talking about it for months now. Let me get my teachable site off of here. And let's introduce, we don't really have to introduce him. If you guys don't know who this is, uh, you know, you're not, you haven't been on YouTube. So Sal de Blasi, welcome. Thanks so much for being here. Uh, hey, Steve. <laughs> uh, you made a mess. I did make a mess. That's my, that's my forte, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. That's one thing you got down pat. <laughs> I do. I know. I know. I, uh, I'm i going to contact Odie and have me get them, send me out a couple of those, uh, they have little daubers now that you can actually get the plugs in that actually stick in. So <laughs> might have to call them up on that. So, <laughs> yeah, but, uh, yeah. So I, I really appreciate you being here. Uh, you know, I know we've been talking about it for months, uh, doing some kind of live stream and I figure this is your forte. I mean, I went to look through all your videos to, you know, we'll show you here in a little bit, a little bit of a, uh, one minute thing that I kind of put together, but man, you have so much mud bed, content on youtube it's unbelievable so if you guys have not seen sal on youtube you have to go to his channel if you're if you want to learn about mud beds it's definitely impressive Thanks, amount dude. of uh amount of stuff there so yeah i've been doing it a while yeah yeah so um so yeah the flow fx train uh i see you using that a lot um yeah the flow fx is uh it's got it all figured out it's uh it's a great 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 train uh, easy to use and uh, I mean why use something else right right yeah yeah no it definitely I love how the you have the little uh, you know I'll be showing that later on but I mean you have a lot of videos as well but the, the spacers and everything it's much easier than trying to squeeze that thin set with the Schluter drain and getting everything yeah. flush you know that was always kind of a pain a little bit yeah yeah that's uh and uh, uh the uh, the way the flow effect the flow effects is 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 a lot sturdier as well the 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 other drains seem to be a little bit more flimsy sometimes right so yeah it's a it's a great drain uh this is a good plug for flow effects yeah I, yeah i know i know well they, yeah. <laughs> just so you know i'm not sponsored i don't think you are we just i, I don't know i just i saw i saw you you using it i saw a towel coach using it and i was like yeah this stuff i have to try it out and um yeah, I mean, I, yeah. I'm impressed, you know. I, I was like you. I was like, you know, I'll, I'll try it out. I, I bought one, and that's what I use now. Right, right. The only time I, I, I don't use the flow effects drain is when I ran out, and because I have, you have to order them online. Right. They don't carry them generally. And so I usually buy, like, five at a time, and I buy a bunch of drain grates, so I just have them in stock. Right. And then uh, then I use them. Right, right. Yeah. Right. And you know what the, the, the little grate that they have? It's so easy to change out, and they give you that little, um, you know, the, the working one there. Yep. So you don't mess up the, the grate uh, as you're installing, you might install your tile. It's just the last little thing you, you pop it in. It's like the, the finishing touch. Right, right. Yeah, exactly. But um, so, yeah, so you, you don't use purple primer on your thin set? Uh, for... uh, no, I try to get in the, in the can <laughs> on the, and on the PVC. Yeah. 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 It doesn't, doesn't, doesn't do well in, in thin set. Yeah, I know. And I, um, 
kind of covered over <laughs> covered over that with more thin set. I, I ultimately think it'll be all right, but um, yeah, no, it'll be fine. Yeah, it, it'll yeah. be fine. I mean, it, the 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 mud itself is gonna gonna bury that anyway. Right. Right. So yeah, you'll be fine. So um, now the slur. I mean, the, this situation that I have here. I mean, would you? Is that would that be a standard practice? Do you agree that uh, thin setting that to the concrete surfaces? So yeah, when you got concrete, what you want is a bonded mud bed. So you need some kind of bonding agent. So it could be it could be uh, the thin set, or it could be some other kind of a bonding agent. As long as you get the the, um, the 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 mortar, the mud to stick to the to the uh, to the concrete, that's right. all you need. If you're doing over plywood. Then you, that's what they call a floating mud bed. Right. So it's just, you know, you put top paper, wire lath, and then you put the mud on top. No, so, I, yeah, I've seen that a lot of your videos. You have the uh, metal lath going over um, yeah. the plywood. <laughs> or even, food. even uh, I think one video had just like the one by six planks, which is really common in really old homes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that doesn't matter. As long as, you see, the uh, the mud is uh, is very strong. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. And as long as you got the wire lath, because they used to do, you know, whole whole um kitchens in mud right right and you, you know sometimes you'd have the the plank flooring instead of you know putting down right the plywood. and that's and a lot then, of uh, you know, extra work to pull that up and put new plywood down you know yeah and then you know it's all lumpy and hump uh, you know and you know it's never flat right right so you put a mud bed down and the whole thing is flat and, and level you right. can make it level right or if you don't want it level you need to you need to slope it one way or another you you can right Right. Yeah. Now, now I just uh, the only mud I do now these days is shower pans because I'm too old and tired. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> well, that's a lot of work to put them on the walls. I never even I've never yeah. even attempted that. Um, yeah. I, I've never actually. I, I do a lot of uh, floors, and I've done a lot of floors, but I ne never actually did any floating of of mud walls. Okay. That's, okay. That's just not. It was never my thing. And I'm too old to start doing that now. Now I'm assuming in this scenario, you probably would have done mud as well on the outside floor. I always do mud. Oh, no, you no floor level or like this type of thing. No, yeah. Oh uh, well, for the for the uh, outside floor, for, yeah. For the for the uh, bathroom floor or for the shower. The outside floor where I had that. Yeah, no. If it needs level or it needs level, right, right. Floor level. It depends on what you what you've got. I mean. You can do the. You could have done that whole floor if you wanted to. You could have done that whole floor in mud, right. depending on what thickness you've got, and then just slope the part that, you know, of the shower down to the. Or you could have sloped that whole floor, right? Because it's a uh, it's a couple of shower. You could have sloped the whole thing to, towards Wait. the drain. Yeah, you're right. I could have sloped the whole thing, and that. I mean, it's yeah. only a uh, eight foot wide. Um, I did go through four bags of uh, floor leveler, so that stuff's not cheap. I mean, I ended up getting the cheaper stuff. I got them to pay. Stuff so it was like you know thirty bucks a bag versus yeah sixty. Well, hours. you know, and then all over concrete. Like if you're going over plywood, you have to get the expensive stuff because most of the levelers on plywood they require wire lath. Although there are some, yeah, I get a lot of heat for for a video that I that I have. They say, "Where's the wire lath? You don't need the wire lath for that particular product." Right, 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 and so, right. but you know, sometimes it's hard to get people to understand that. You're using a product that's designed for what I'm using it for. Right, right. Yeah, and so. I, I've kind of, I mean, I, I've gotten away from, um, you know, when it comes to floor heating, using those really expensive systems, uh, you know, the teacher heat or the, you know, whatever. Whoever makes the, t they're all making them now as far as the yeah. mat system. Um, but for me, you know, the uncoupling membrane aspect to it, I don't find a lot of, I wouldn't find it value in it in the basement anyways. Uh, but uh, even on for, well, you know, I, I know I might disagree with you there. Why is that? Because, because there's two kinds of concrete, concrete, concrete that's cracked <laughs> and concrete that's gonna crack. Okay. Okay. <laughs> touche. Touche. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. So yeah, I, you know, I, I, for, for like before uncoupling membranes have come out, like when did they come out, like 19, 80 or something like that. that I, I'm not sure. Has it really? Yeah, it's been a while. Um, well, the first version of it probably came out in the 80s. You, you know, the, the Schluter Dietra, the long one. Right. You ever, ever see that one? Uh, I don't think so. Before it had the little part, the little squares, it had like long channels. Oh, no. That was the first version that came out. Um, okay. But 
uh, I, I forget what I was saying. <laughs> what was no, it's all about uncoupling membranes and when they oh, first yeah. came out and everything. Yeah. So, so, so yeah, I did. I, I, you know, I've done, you know, hundreds of, uh, of floors over just bare concrete. Right. You know what I mean? Right. But, you know, yeah. if, the, if the concrete cracks, yeah, there's no, there's no, uh, so if you can afford it, I mean, you don't have to, right? But if you can afford it, it's better to to have some kind of uh, you know protection yeah. underneath it. Yeah. Well, and and I guess I guess it. for second floor bathrooms, I've also, I mean, it's all it's mostly a cost thing for me, honestly, anymore. Yeah. But um, you know, because these 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 type of rolled out systems, I mean, they're a third of the cost. Um, and but you still have to get yeah, and- a decent floor level, or if you're going over plywood, I always use you know, like a good quality stuff for that because I'm only going, you know, an eighth inch yeah. thick or something. I don't want to, I want to make sure I get something that's not going to be a problem. You know? Yeah, and then if you, because you've got the, um, you've got the the heat in the mud bed there. Right. You don't even have to worry about if it's not perfectly flat because you're going to be covering the whole thing. Exactly. Like, how much, how much, th- what thickness do you have at the, at the, where the shower floor meets the outside floor? In, how, inch, how and a, inch and a quarter. Inch and, and a quarter. Yeah, yeah. I, I've got so a little bit more. Quarter. It's only a three by four shower, um, yeah. and uh, main reason, um, you know, I just I'm using pebble stone uh, on this, so I wanted yeah. to make sure that I get a little bit more yeah, of you a, need a um, you know, a little bit steeper because I've just had problems in the past. Uh, yeah, you, you want it to be so you know uh, the the pitch to the to the drain is supposed to be between a quarter and a half inch. Right. Right. So if you got those pebbles, it's probably better to go towards the half inch and not stay. Yeah. So that it drains a a little bit better because, you know, when you're grouting those, you get those pebbles, you get to like the, sometimes you get a deep groove in the, in the grout. Right. And, you know, water can sit there. Even if you're, if you're, uh, right. If if you're, you know, your pitch is perfectly fine and even all the way around, but you got those pebble is not, yeah, not the, uh, ideal stone for a shelf yeah. i don't think so either i agree i i always i'm getting the flat cut but still even with that i i want to yeah. i want a little bit steeper of a thing for that yeah you know yeah but yeah and regular then, pebble yeah there's no doubt some of the regular pebble i mean there are yeah. some areas that might water's just going to sit in i mean you, you you know you know how you can stop people from picking that stuff <laughs> tell me you won't install it <laughs> no 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 just get a sheet of that stuff yeah. you know the, the rounded pebbles and let them stand on it for ten minutes barefoot. <laughs> yeah, they that's true. <laughs> they won't want it. Right? It looks good. It looks nice, but as you know, oh, you know, for any even a short exp- a period of period of time standing on it, it becomes very uncomfortable. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. So. Yeah. But you know, we just do what people want, right? That, yeah, that's exactly it. I mean, sometimes you can't talk them out of what they want. Yeah. Um, so I'm sure you'll pick out uh, some of the things that probably, you know, maybe you could tell right now what's going to be an issue for me. Uh, I don't know if you notice anything, but maybe this picture below kind of highlights the thing that makes it a little bit difficult. Um, we'll show in the next video of how that yeah. is. But, um, you yeah. know, this so is the this is really this is really the proper you know way that they want you to go about doing is packing mud under there and and this would yeah be- so you you just did all thin set right? i did all thin set uh so you know what the problem is with the thin set it doesn't screen <laughs> no 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 because thin set right is only designed to go to a certain thickness right Correct. if you go beyond that thickness it shrinks right 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 so you could end up with an unsupported flange I, you don't you, what do you have there like a half, half an inch under half, a little less than a half inch yeah, yeah so you're not gonna you'll be fine but if you had like an inch and a quarter under there and you get all right it would be it could be it would be a problem right. so normally when i do those i i will i will set the flange and then i'll get a, a margin trowel and just put some thin set underneath right and then pack my mud, mud underneath yeah you know right. that makes well, sense. you know it's like cross, dotting all your eyes crossing all your t's just <laughs> yeah make sure you don't have a problem right yeah, right yeah, I always felt comfortable with a half inch of thin set. I, I always recommend if there's, you know, like in a floor area or any type of floor, if you were more than a half inch and you better floor level or you got to do something to, you know, uh, address yeah. the issue, you know. So, so what do you have, X77 there or was that X, this, X5? X5? X5. X5. Yeah. 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 So that's, so. A, that's, a, um, that's a large format tile mortar. Right. 
Right. So half an inch for that probably is not not a problem. Right. It's when you use like regular thin that you you go more than like three eighths of an inch and you're in trouble. Correct. Right. Yeah. Right. 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 Mm-hmm. So, um, so yeah. I mean, you know, there. This was, uh, you know, like, like I like I'll state in my next video. I, I this mud beds aren't something that I do on a regular basis. I used to do that when I first started out. I had absolutely no idea what I was doing when I was doing the the pan liners. And, you know, um, I think a lot of people had those same issues, even, I mean, it wasn't until you started your YouTube channel that you, did anybody know how to do things, I guess, you know, but uh, there was very limited information, I feel, and maybe there, you know, we could have, I could have reached out to Schlute, but I didn't know anything when I was starting out, so, I mean. Well, you know, so, but that's, everyone's like that, you know? Right. And then today, today, there is no excuse for not knowing. True. Yeah, right? that's very true. You know, 20 years ago, you know, if you didn't get a, have a TCNA handbook, if you didn't have, I don't know, I mean, if you didn't get like the magazines and read the technical articles, what information was out there? Right. 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 Yeah. So but today, you know, there's plenty, plenty of info, although <laughs> the problem is uh, there's plenty of info out there. you got to sort through what's what's good and what's bad. That's very true. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, and then when you got some guy that's uh stating with authority this is the way to do it and it's completely wrong right how does that you know that novice know that he's not doing it right or well, he's doing it wrong and that's the sad i mean you know it, obviously youtube and social media has been a, an amazing uh place to learn but also yeah whatever gets engagement is what's watched you know so yeah. you could be completely yeah. wrong and i'll get a ten thousand more comments and that's what's going to be out there you know, yeah, as that's... you know, so it's definitely is a challenge and that's why, you know, going to, you know, different events or, or, or learning from people that have been doing it for, I mean, how many years have you been doing it for 30 years, Me? <laughs> yeah. uh, almost 40 years, this guy is uh, 38 and a half years. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So, so that's why I say I'm old and tired. Yeah. I'm 65 <laughs> years old. <laughs> Yeah, I see you still doing a lot of big floors too. I I find out. Yeah, well, I, you know, I don't mind the big floors. Uh, I actually got a house coming up that I got to do. It's got, it's got one, two, three, three bathrooms uh, and a couple of good sized floors in it. So right, you know. But uh, you know, I I'm slowing down now a little bit anyway because at yeah. some point I got to say enough's enough. Right. Yeah. So. Yeah. So, all right, well, I'm gonna go on to my next video here. And as you can see in the background here, this is my course that I kind of have, just a lot of pictures that kind of re-address some of the, the methods or the um, things you kind of want to pay attention to on this. And um, I don't know if this one, I have, a, I actually have, I've linked a couple of your videos. Maybe that's in the actual mud bed shower installation part. No, I have one here about uh, the wire mesh because that's, you know, yeah. if you're doing a plywood, substrate that's probably the best way to go now do you um do you ever do any of the uh detra underneath of that or are you always wire mesh never never if you if you look in the in the tcna handbook there's no there's no spec for that there's okay. no method for that. it's all you know wire lath or reinforce enforcement okay. right uh and so you know why why chance it yeah that's you true. know i know guys that do it and never had a problem right and you're probably not going to have a problem, right? But yeah, you know it's easy enough to you know top paper and, and wire lath is is easy enough. Yeah, that's true. I mean, what you know, it's not. It's actually probably yeah. And then, and then you got to cheaper, you gotta, I guess. You know, honestly. Yeah. yeah. Well, you got to look at your you got to look at your mud too. Like uh, the four to one there, the minimum thickness on the four to one. If you read the bag, it says three eighths of three eighths of an inch. Exactly. Yep. Right. Yeah. But some of them, right? Like if you get a modified mud bed, they yep. can go even thinner. Yeah, but some of them you have to have a little bit bit yeah. deeper. I think Ardex makes one that you can go down almost to nothing, almost. I yeah, don't want, yeah. You know, there's, there's there's different products out there. Because I've heard of guys, but, you know, doing curbless showers when they have a three quarter inch drop. But now, I mean, that's going to be an issue with any of these drains. Um, even this one, you could probably get this sucked tight to the floor. I guess if you cut out the square for it to go down into the floor, maybe. Yeah. You know, to get us, you know, if, but the three quarter inch is pretty, I mean, that's pretty unrealistic, right? I mean, that's to. Yeah. To, well, you know, if you, you need, you have to have your slope, right? Right. Right. So if you've got, you know, if you've got a, if, so what's the furthest point away from that? And then like two feet? Two feet. Yeah. The, that's what. So yeah, you're going to have a half inch drop. Correct. Right. And that that's if you're doing a quarter inch per foot. Right. And you got pebbles and you want a steeper flow drop, you could have up to 
yeah. like an inch. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you need the depth of, I mean, the, of the mud. I guess I'm saying, I mean, it'd be outside the standards of what even Flowfax would be saying, but if you were to be able to get that, that, um, this actual drain flush flat on the plywood, you know, um, yeah. screwed in, I guess you could technically get a half inch yeah. drop. Well, see, that's the thing too on the, uh, on the, um, uh, on the flow effect drain, a lot of times I'll put like four screws around the perimeter, right? Yeah, and that's what's another great thing is that this has those screw. I mean, I don't know. If so that way, if it's but... you know you you can keep it flat because you know right. plumbing pipes aren't all <laughs> they, you know by by nature they're on an angle, so that pipe that comes up is on an angle, that's right? Right. That's right. Yep. So you know, so with those screws, you can you know you you can adjust it so it's perfectly level in both directions. That's right. Yep. Yep. Yeah, and that, yep. that's something you can't do with uh, other other drains. Right. All right. Yeah. So this one's a, a little bit lengthier. Um, I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna shrink you down a little bit. Um, I'm gonna probably see if see if it's gonna. You can go smaller. Me. I won't be offended. You can go smaller. <laughs> I think we'll just put each other up here at the top here, and then uh, yeah, it'd be good just to you know it's kind of like a reaction video. So we'll see. I'll pay attention to reaction whether I you know click you off completely or. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm joking. Uh, so yeah, here's the uh, the actual mud bed installation, and uh, give you a lot of credit, man, for doing this stuff all the time. It definitely um, it's a it's a skill set for sure. It's definitely a yeah. skill set. Well, you know, you know, afterwards I'll tell you why I do I do mud beds. Okay, all right, that'd be great. Yeah, let's let's hear it. All right, we'll get started. Here. You can see I have basically three quarters of an inch drop. That's definitely a lot more than you would need in this circumstance, but that river rock, I definitely highly advise having it a little bit steeper like this. So that's gonna really work out terrific. And we have half inch here. Basically, this mortar bed, now there are different types out there, but the four to one sand mix can only go down to three eighths of an inch. So that's gonna have to be your minimum thickness for this to work. We have a half inch around the drain, so we're in good shape. So if, always pay attention to that. You know, I know sometimes you're trying to really minimize the the height difference, but um, you know, we're going down to a half inch. In all reality, if I would have lowered the entire concrete pad, it would have made it a little bit easier in some fashion, you know, than just pack mortar underneath of the flange and then just, uh, you know, embed it. But everything's gonna work just fine on this one. So most important thing with this is just make sure you're measuring your water properly. So it's like three and a half to four quarts of water. So make sure you measure it. And then we need to use a bucket mixer to get it to a nice dry consistency. You basically want this stuff to be um, pretty thick. You want to be able to ball it up. And so it has to be pretty dry, like a dry pack mud. We'll show you what that consistency is here in a minute. Okay, so this is the bucket mixer. This really is going to make it so that you can uh, mix this in a bucket and make it a really dry mixture. Otherwise, you want to do this by hand with like a hoe in the back of a um, you know wheelbarrow or something like that uh, but these bucket mixers really work great for this and makes it pretty easy to to mix them nicely so let's go ahead and mix this so you can feel it kind of falls apart on your hands the most important thing is you can compact it, kind of make a ball, and it stays nice and form. So it's kind of, you know, it's kind of like a wet, a wet sand essentially. So it's you don't want it to be dripping off your hands. Uh, you want it to be fairly dry. This needs to be compacted. That's the whole goal, and that's why it needs to be dry. So we'll go ahead and uh, mix this one bucket at a time. But we're going to try to get the perimeter nice and level first, and then slope everything to the drain. So I'm about to put a plug in the drain. You don't want to get mortar down in there. So on a normal circumstance, I would have the cement board all the way up, all the way down into the mortar pan but since we're filming this is just purposes of filming um uh you know we're we're leaving this all open but just know that it's a better idea to have all your cement board 
all up before you start this. But at the end of the day, it's really not gonna make a difference. I mean, might mix another bucket and then we can get this perimeter set up. Really, if we get this level, you know, the level will kind of compact itself here. So the idea is to compact it. So you need to make sure that you're kind of patting it down before you go screeding it. But we'll get this, uh, got a little bit of mortar in there. And don't stress the small stuff on this. It's, you can take as long as you want to make this work. Oh, shoot. This is some settings. Sorry guys, I think I got my sound messed up. Okay. Takes Sorry experience and I'll, I'll admit that I, I don't, I'll do can't hear anything. Uh, this that I think it makes most sense to actually do it on just because, you know, everything's mortar and it's just going to make it easier to actually set, make a curbless shower. Typically I'm, I usually do like to use the systems that already have a pan system to it. I think it, they just make it easier for anybody and it definitely speeds up. I'm sorry guys, I really don't know what's going on with this audio here. I hope I don't have to start this up again. You can still hear me, right, Sal? Yeah, I can hear you. And I can't, I can't hear, I have to watch the video on another browser because in the, in the stream that you have here, I can't hear the audio of the, of the video. Oh. You know, in the browser where you know where we are, we're doing the live stream in your software. Oh, you can't, you can't watch it there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, I can watch it. I just can't hear the audio. Oh. Okay. In the video, in your video, so I'm watching it on another screen. Okay. Uh, and, you know, in just the browser, as, okay. as everyone else is watching. It. All right. Sorry about. All right. So let's see if this process. Oh, we'll just um. There's quite a different ways to get this level too. The, the, the audio is fine though. Some guys stick a okay, laser. Good on top of their drain and show a perimeter joint. Others use levels like this. And um, one other, if I would have had all the backer board up, another real great way is to put like a perimeter piece of cement board or foam board at that level mark all the way around and you can just screed from that board over. That makes a lot of sense in this scenario. I can't really do that because I don't have the, foot, I don't have the board up. So it is what it is. You know, you can just use a, a regular level to just get these perimeters level and then you're just basically screeding from there. Go ahead and compact this back side. That should be level once you hit both sides. So it looks good there. Just make sure that there isn't anything sticking. Should be a little bit low right here. Just sprinkle some stuff where it's low. That looks good. All right, so then now we just need a little bit more. Now we got that whole perimeter done. Now we just need a little bit more to uh, screed towards the drain. Probably just one more 
bag is, we're probably not going to even need a full bag. Now, if this drain was up a lot higher, I'd be stuffing mortar underneath of the uh, pan. But since I have half inch of thin set underneath of there, I'll be all right. You just want to make sure that that flange is well bonded. Half inch of thin set underneath of this is, is not a bad. I um, mean, once this hardens, it'll be really uh, well bonded. So I didn't, uh, I mixed a full bucket primarily just to get the right ratio of water. So now we'll just go ahead and I'm really not going to even need that much more here. But just want to get enough to compact it and we'll just screed off the excess to the drain. So you can use, you can use whatever you want for a float or for a straight edge, I should say. Sometimes on these shorter areas, I just use the my magnesium float. That's what I'm trying to say here. Okay, so then we just want to basically go from our edge and just scrape off some of this excess, just putting pressure on the drain area. Some of this thin set right at the drain does kind of make it a little bit problematic because uh, thin set doesn't really screed well. <laughs> And you want to pay attention to your straight edge, make sure you don't have any divots anywhere. So when you're just looking at this, just making sure it's all flat. I'm struggling from this thin set being in here. I'm gonna take some of that out. <laughs> that definitely didn't help me out. <laughs> and just pack that with mud because the mortar does not, or the thin set does not like the screed. Like I said, this is something you can take your time at and just keep adding more stuff and compacting it until it's right. It's obviously a a skill set that takes time to get good at. Some guys can probably already be done by now, but uh, you know, don't stress the small stuff. Just take your time and just make sure that everything is flat because the flatter that this is, the easier it is for you to do your tiling job. So then once you have everything sloped and everything's flat to the drain, at this point, it's just a matter of making the mud nice and smooth. And that's where I like to use one of these uh, uh, finish trowels. Any finish trowel would work, but I do like these Vim. Uh, these are basically corner trowels. It kind of has the, the edges cut off of them. It makes it nice and easy to get into the corners. But you're really just making sure that you're trying to make everything nice and smooth, making sure there isn't any divots anywhere. Um, you know, all the sloping is done at this point. It's just a matter of smoothing things out. And sometimes this can actually drive you nuts a little bit. It could actually take a little bit longer to get this nice and smooth. So just take your time at it. And at some point you have to just, you know, say this is good enough. Uh, you still do have waterproofing on to go on top of this. Plus you're going to be thin setting tile. So as long as everything's sloped, uh, you know, the roughness of the surface isn't as big of a deal, but the smoother it is, it's nicer, especially if you're going to go with really small tiles. If you're going to do penny tile or anything like that, you're going to really want a nice smooth surface. So hope some of these tips helped you out. 
mud beds are definitely a skill set worth having. It definitely is uh, something that is great for custom showers. And in this situation, having a heated flooring underneath of it, it's really going to be awesome. So uh, we'll get on to the waterproofing portion here next. All right, so yeah, <clears throat> definitely uh, something that, uh, you know, like towards the end. That's one thing I, I have to say when I watch some of your videos, Sal, uh, the, the amount, the, the smoothness of your mud job, and I don't know if it's, you think it's the mixture that I have or just, you know, probably the tools that I have aren't making it quite as. Well, you know, it, it seems to me, how much, how much water are you putting in that mud? About three and a half quarts. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm. I'm... They say, they say. Uh, I think the thing says like three quarts, three to four quarts. Yeah. Um, I'm I'm actually doing like two and a half. Two and a half. Three, yeah, the three quarts is too much. It's too wet. Oh, okay. Okay. If you if it's if it's if it's if it's a little bit too wet, it sticks to the trowel. Right. Have you noticed that? Oh yeah. No, that's where I was getting some of the divots that were kind of pulling. You know, things were pulling so out on me a little bit. That's because that's because it's too wet. If you make it a little bit dry, it's still gonna dry as hard as a rock, right? Right, but it's easier to work with, and it doesn't stick to your trowel. Okay, okay. So as long as it's as long as it's got enough water, it'll be fine, and it doesn't have to be a high strength concrete. Underneath of it, you know? it doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't need to be a high strength concrete. It just needs to be a mud mud floor. You know, you know, a deck mud is is like four to one, five to one. Right. You know what I mean? Right. And then you, you're covering it with tile. That's where you need the strength. Correct, right? But I mean, I couldn't go over like a gravel bed with this. I mean, I, well, it depends. See, the thing is this: if you like, you know, a lot of times you got, um, uh, if you're doing a vinyl liner, right? You need a pre, you need a pre slope. So that pre slope under the vinyl liner can be anything, right? As long as it slopes to the to the drain, right? It can be in. It could be. A, they make foam trays that, for pre slopes. You yeah. could even use. You could even use sand. Once you put the weight on, you know, I don't re recommend doing that. But once you put the weight on top of it, or the mud bed on top of the the vinyl liner, and the and the and the sand is enclosed, it's never going anywhere. So you're saying that I wouldn't have need the concrete underlayment. No, no, not not in this case here, because this is this is your final mud bed. Right. You, you you have to do mud. But if you've got a vinyl liner and you've got a pre-slope underneath. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's when you can use. Whatever you, you know, want. Right. Whatever you want. Right, right, right. right. And, and even if it's sand. Because sand, it, once it's enclosed in a in a, in a, in a structure right. and you got weight on top of yeah, it. Yeah, right, right. It's not moving. Right, 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 right. right, right. But, yeah. you know, just to, to, to say. And then I noticed that you use your, what is it? That, was that a magnesium trial? <laughs> yeah, or? it was. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. I see. I don't use a magnesium trowel. I use a wooden wooden trowel, and I use a a, a finished trowel for everything. Okay. Mostly, mostly the finished trowel. So why, um, you know, I haven't really noticed much of a difference between the wood and that. But it, it what does it just have a? Um, I mean, do you feel like it just kind well, of? Well, the the uh, the magnesium float tends to draw the water up. Oh, that's a good point. Right. Right. That's kind of what it's designed for. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, and then I don't, uh, then, you know, when you're tapping your, your, your level, yeah. um, I, 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 t I use a rubber mallet. Okay. So if, cause if you on use the, a wooden, on, what on your wooden float, you mean? Or no, no. When I, when I'm like tapping down the level to make oh, it. Oh, my, I gotcha. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. A, a rubber mallet, because if you use your wooden one to tap it down, you end up getting a burr on the bottom of the, uh, of the float. Uh, and as right. you're trying to smooth out, right, it, it digs into your. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So you know, and I would mix that a little bit drier. Okay. Uh, and you'll find it's going to be a little bit easier. Okay. To to do that, and uh, and it and it doesn't. It, if it's too wet when you're pulling it, right, it tends to make like a, a ripple. If it's too wet, you know what I mean or not? Right. Right. Yeah. Right. But if it's dry, it doesn't do that. It doesn't do that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. I've seen that. You know. You know what the um, the Houston method is. No. So what they do is they get their mud, 
you know, the, the, the mud mix, and I put it in all dry, completely dry. And they slope it down to the, to the, um, to the drain, and they have it, and it's all completely dry. And then you get a, a watering can, and you sprinkle all the water in afterwards. Huh. Okay. Right? And then that water soaks into the mud, right? And it gets as hot as a rock. Have you know? Have you ever left a bag of concrete in the garage? Yeah. No way. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. So that's that's how that's how that works. Now, I, how, I, been, I mean, not, wouldn't the sprinkling of the water kind of ruin the the slope or whatever? No, no, because you're gently sprinkling oh, sprinkling oh, okay. water. You know what I mean, you're not like getting a hose and uh, yeah. Well, you know what I mean? That's interesting. And you use it, and you and you the, the amount of water you put in is the amount of water. So if it calls for three quarts, that's what you're putting in. You're not putting in like yeah, right, right, yeah. You're not just spraying it you know, yeah, freely. Yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah. I got so, you. I got you. And so I, I've never done that, but I've seen that. Um, and then you know sometimes if you want to smooth it off a bit, if you get like uh, sometimes I get a piece piece of two inch foam, right? You cut a block out of it, and sometimes you can rub it on the mud, and that kind of will smooth it out okay okay you know so just little things that, yeah it that is no i you know what i never even thought i mean i've done it both ways with the wood floating and the magnesium i just never even thought about it drawing water out of the mud that probably really does do that and creates yeah. a, even a worse a yeah situation. well if you ever like yeah. like with a steel trowel have you ever gone keep on yeah. going when it's like, a lot of moisture you keep on going over it right it draw it draws you know like the slurry up to the top yeah, it does yep yeah. Whereas a uh, wood wood doesn't do that, right, right, right. So, so but do you, you know why I always do mud? Yeah, why do you do mud? What's the uh, because because no floor is level. Yeah, and no drain is in the center. That's true. Yeah, everything's a little bit off. So, <laughs> so yeah, so you have to fix the you have to fix the floor before you can put the because you know the the foam trays. Yeah, floor has to be level before you can put the. Yeah. The foam train, yeah, right? Yeah. Well, you got to spend time fixing the floor, making it level. Well, and, and as a contractor, you're not having to be concerned about, you know, because that's one of the things that if you, if you're not paying attention to maybe that, or it changes in the middle of your job, that could really hurt you. I mean, I could really yeah. take some time to get whatever you were planning to do yeah. um, to finish that off, you know? So. Yeah. So you can, you can, there are, uh, there are companies that will make you a custom foam tray, yeah. right? And then, you know, like Laticrete and Schluter, they have the pre-made ones. Right. So to make those fit, you either have to, most of the time, is either cut them or extend them. Buy a bigger one or, yeah. 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 And once you've done that, you no longer have a, if you yeah. cut it, you no longer have a level perimeter. Correct. Yes. So, right. so with mud, it doesn't matter how deep it is. It doesn't matter where the yeah. drain is. It doesn't matter how level the floor is. Yeah. Right. It, it, it always fits. And in your estimating ability, you know what you're in for no matter what. Like you're not yeah. having to guess that you're going to need additional, you know, membrane or whatever. You already know what yeah. you're doing. That makes a lot yeah, of sense. Just, yeah. 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 But that's why I use And then if you can get a, 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 a shower tray and it fits right in and you don't have, then it's a lot quicker. Right. But if you have to modify the tray and level yeah. the floor, yeah. you'll be done with the mud before you're done with well, the tray. And, you know, some of these systems, uh, you know, to get a bigger tray to cut down if you didn't want to have to, you know, do additional mud, you know, you could be talking about $400 difference there, you know. It's, yeah, and then how much is the mud going to cost you, right? Uh, right. What, what do you, the two and a half bags. You, bags two and a half bags, three bags. <laughs> so even if it's like 10 bucks a bag, that's 30 bucks. Yeah. yeah. As opposed to 300. Yeah. 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 Now, I mean, I do, uh, I do always recommend Schluter because their pans are pretty inexpensive. But yeah. again, yeah, with that terrain issue, you're, there's no doubt about it. They're a little bit more flexible, but uh, you know. And then with the um, the problem with mud for first timers, um, a lot of times they either mix it too wet, but more often than not, they mix it too dry. Really. Yeah, I get a lot of emails. I get a lot of comments that the mud is sandy, it's falling apart, it's crumbling, oh, right? Wow. Okay. Because they didn't put enough water in it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, so that could be a problem. So, you know, it's everything is easy until you try it. Yep. Oh, I know that. Well, that's where at the beginning of this video, a forty-eight second video looks like that's simple, no big deal. You know, I mean. There's a lot more to it than what you can show in 30 yeah. seconds, you know. You spread, I mean, spread around some mud, you know, <laughs> get it with some levels, and then yeah. get a get a get a 
get a uh, finish trail, yeah. smooth it out, you're done. Yep, exactly. Yeah, you just show the, the last little bits of it just being put together. I mean, even this video, I could have cut a lot more out of it and made it look like it was a lot easier than what it was. And, and then, you know, the thing in reality, I might bet once you've done a few of them, yeah, right. even mixing and, and screening, it's going to take you what? Yeah. That Something like that, a couple of hours? Right. Yeah. I think we had an hour. I think I actually, actually had an hour and 30 minutes of film on here. And that's, you know, full, full on, you know, so. Yeah. So it, it doesn't, <coughs> once you know what you're doing, it doesn't really take that long. Right. Right. Sometimes it's, 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 it, and if you've got a helper that's mixing your mud and, and getting, doing your thin set, yeah, it's under an hour for sure. Sure. Yeah. Now I never really got a full straight answer from anybody. Um, you know, I'm going to be doing RDX eight plus nine over this. Once I get the cement board, I mean, obviously this whole configuration of this, uh, you know, putting this together is kind of backwards. Obviously everything would be framed. The cement board would be up and, you know, yeah. I'd be pretty so much walk through this now. Oh, so one point, right? So if if you're doing a bonded system like this one here, mm -hmm. where everything underneath is completely waterproof, right? So so your cement board's never going to get wet because everything is waterproof. But if you're doing a vinyl liner, right? Mm -hmm. If you've got cement board using cement board, this you know water in, water out shower. If you've got cement board like Do Rock, uh, Wonder Board, a true that that cement board can be in the mud and okay. should be in the mud. If you're using hardy, hardy backer board, you can't yeah. put that in the mud because it's got cellulose in it. Yeah. It'll, it'll deteriorate. So right. depending on what board you're using, if it's foam, it doesn't matter. Right. 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 But if it's, right. uh, if it's, uh, if it's a cement board, it can be in the mud. If it's hardy backer, it can't be in the mud. I mean, if, I mean, but, I mean, if I'm doing the RDX eight plus nine on no, no. If you're doing, if it's a bonded system, yeah. nothing underneath is ever going to get wet. Yeah, exactly. So it's perfectly fine. Right, right, right. But if you, because a lot of guys out, you know, watching, they might do a, a like a, a vinyl liner, right? Just you know, just for them, you know, yep. if you if you're going to use a cement board and you're going to put it in the mud, make sure it's a cement board and it's not a fiber cement board. Yeah. See, and I've never even. Well, I, I was doing everything wrong when I first started out. When it, when I was doing the rubber liners, I didn't know anything about the pre slope. I didn't know anything about Hardy back. Like Hardy everyone else, right? right? Yeah. So when you do you leave a gap off of this then, or what? How what do you do for the, for the Hardy backer? Yeah, if you were to do if this was a you rubber liner, Hardy backer, yeah, you got to leave a gap and you you got to put a sealant. Put a sealant against all of that and then... yeah, so that you know no water can wick up because the Hardy backer. I've, I've ripped out showers where it's got hardy backer, right? And, you know, you rip it out. You rip out the mud bed, and then you see the smush underneath, and you, and you think it's sheetrock, and then you rip out more, and it turns out to be, you know, hardy backer, which is a fiber some cement board. Right. So, it, the, you know, the cellulose in it will deteriorate over time if, if it's, you know, immersed in, right. in moisture right. all the time. Whereas right. cement board, right. it, you know, it'll get wet, it'll yeah. wick, but nothing will yeah. ever happen to it. Yeah, I, I, uh, I personally have stop using hardy backer like yeah a long time ago i i i hate the stuff because it 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 wicks all the moisture out of everything you know i mean you go to thin set something even when you wipe it down with a sponge it's like zapping everything out of it yeah i know it's it's too thirsty i mean yeah, yeah. i mean some people love it me me uh I, and then when you know when that first came out it was 7 sixteenths. oh is that right okay yeah so you have to shim everything out <laughs> that's fun <laughs> that makes it extra fun um yeah but okay, so I guess my question was is that like when can you liquid waterproof this? If you go with a bonding flange, yeah, you could use liquid waterproofing. You got to make sure that you get the right mill thickness. Correct. But I mean, is right? it is it is it twenty four hours? Is it after this or? Well, depending on the mud. Like my pay says seventy two hours. Is that what it says? Okay, all right. Seventy two hours, sure. right? If you're doing sheet membrane. Yeah. Right. It doesn't matter. You could just do it right now. Yeah. You could you could do it right now when it's wet. Right. The, the pay still says you are supposed to wait. Right. But Schluter says you don't have to wait. Right. Okay. So and and I, I I'll always do my my mud and then the next day I put my my membrane on. So That's, you're always a more of a membrane installation on this. Yeah. Thing. So I I never do because um, you don't want to wait the time to to do. Yeah. Because now you got to do two coats. Right. Right. And then you have to wait 72 hours. Whereas a sheet membrane, you just put, you know, you yeah. go the next day, you put it yeah. in. So, so one day 
you go in, depending on how, how, how hard you want to work, you go in, you put your board up, you do your mud bed, the next day you waterproof everything, the third day you're tiling. Right, 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 right. So, and that's where, right. the, I guess, the argument, and depending on the situation, obviously, if, you know, like this, this is the situation that I think makes the most sense to do a mud bed period, because, you know, why would you do all the leveling of concrete underneath of that for a preformed base? You know, and, and I'm hating the shower, so it's like, yeah. you know, it makes yeah. no sense to do anything else in this situation. And there's a lot of people that have patio homes and things like that as well. And, you know, I think I had a question here on YouTube about, like, what do you do? How do you get a curbless shower in existing concrete floor? Well, you got to cut well, out the concrete. hammer it out. <laughs> yeah, you got to hammer it out. There's really no other solution. Well, there, 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 is, there is another another thing. You either raise the floor at right. the door, yep. right, or you jackhammer <laughs> it at the, at the shower, right? That's right. That's right. So... Yeah. You know, there's really no two ways about it. Right. And, you know, when you're busting things out, like, it, you know, it, it's going to be more than three quarters of an inch. So it makes no sense to use any of the pan systems when you're getting. No, it, does, it, it doesn't. And then and then when you're jackhammering everything out, it's not, as you say, it's not, it's not going to be even. Right. 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 And then so we're going to level the floor. Right. Exactly. Yeah. It becomes yeah. a lot you more, I mean? a lot more trouble to, to do that. And then, yeah. And then you're. Again, you're you're kind of you got to make sure that drains right where you need it, you know. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 exactly. So yeah, so. yeah. you know, so you can get the, you know, there, there's different companies that make the, you know, you you have your, you send them your 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 drain location, you send them your size, and then they'll make it and it fits perfectly fine. Right, and you know, I've been wanting to do a, um, you know, like a a pull of that? some sort and find out like how many people are willing to wait that kind of time. Um, because most of them are three to four days. I mean, in, depending yeah. on shipping and where it comes from, yeah. you know, so, you know, it's, I've never had a, you know, I've, I've done that on a few jobs, but I'm always way more in a rush to be able to wait for something. Well, you know, like something, I think for DIY, it might make sense because a DIY yeah. usually is doing, you know, a, you know, piecemeal. Yep. That's true. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And then if you, it, and it depends on how, if, if you're doing one bathroom. Yep. Right. And you know, you're, GC or your your tile contract, and you just do one bathroom at a time. That's going to hold you up. Yeah. But if you if you've got like three bathrooms in a house, right? While you're prepping the other bathroom, that's true. Right. So it all depends on the situation. It there really are, there is a there are situations where it makes sense. Yeah. Right. Right. True. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And um... personally, I don't use them. I have installed them. I have installed them, but I I haven't. Um, I can't even remember the last time I. I can't, I can't remember, I remember a video of. I mean, I'm always watching your stuff. There, there, there there's, there's a couple out there. There's one where I that I put a linear drain in, and then I put a foam tray in. And I, I, I was actually going to use a foam tray. It was a big shower, and I was like, you know, it was a linear drain, mm -hmm. right? And I was like, well, let me put a foam tray in here just for, for the heck of it, right? Yeah. And, and then I saw the price. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep, yep, yep. And I was like, no. Nah, oh, one more question on this. Um, I get a lot of comments about this as well. And, uh, you know, when somebody does a mud bed and they, you know, they have the same issues I just kind of had, maybe it was too wet and you're pulling a lot of stuff apart and you get divots. Yeah. What would you recommend to patch that the next day? Like, what would. Well, if it's, it depends on how deep it is. If it's if it's just like very shallow, just spread put patch it with some thin set. Yeah, some thin set. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It, it, but if it's deep. Yeah. But how deep is it really going to be if you got a little divot? Well, I mean, mouth? maybe you even got burned out at the end, and you have a little bit of a, a recess before the drain, and you actually need to repair yeah. the slope. You know, I don't. Yeah. Know. Well, you can. You know, if you the next day, if you got to pull out mud the next day to repair it, it's easy to it's yeah, easy to break up. Right. If you wait like, you know, three or four or five days, it gets a lot harder. But I've always recommended like feather finish and stuff. Is that something? Yeah, no, that'll work. Any 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 kind of concrete yeah. patch will work. Right. 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 But if you if if the divot is like an eighth of an inch, yeah. Right. I think that's going to be perfectly right. fine. Right. You know what I mean? And and sadly, I, I I do hear a lot of people that. You know, they did everything, and then they took the shower, and then there's water sitting next to the drain. You know. So what I recommend, and this is what I do all the time, right? Because no one's perfect. Right. Once you've once you've got it all done, right? Get your level, 
and check to yeah. make sure that it's flat and there's no bird bath. And because it's easy to fix when it's fresh. Right, right. 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 And then, and then, you know, make sure everything's pitching to the drain. And if you, yeah. it, it takes like two minutes to check it. Right. Right. And if you have a problem, you fix it right there and then, and you don't have a problem anymore. Right. But, you know, that comes with experience, right? Yeah. 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 So, <laughs> sometimes you're, yeah. I mean, at least for me, I'm always sometimes my worst enemy when it comes to yeah. some of this stuff. Uh, you yeah. know, you're always, yeah. always kind of correcting my own. Uh, you know, either rushness or something that I didn't do right, or I think that I'm going to be able to overcome it, and it just uh, yeah. Doesn't well, work you know, I, I you know, like you, I learned things a lot of things the hard way. Yeah. Right. Yep. Yep. And I've kind of, I've kind of come to the point where, you know, if you see something that's wrong and you're in the middle of it, yeah, it just fix it. Yep. Well, there's no doubt. I mean, there's a couple of tips you just gave me on this one that I'll be uh, thinking about the next one, and it should make it a lot easier. Uh, and again, those are all things that, yeah, you get the, you, you, the more experience you have, the more, you know, yeah. hopefully you, improve, thing, you don't make the same mistakes again. You know, so, another thing you should get to you using like a five gallon bucket there or a six gallon bucket, it's a six gallon. Yeah. Get yourself an eight gallon Ruby bucket, eight gallon. Okay. Eight gallon Ruby bucket. You can put a whole bag in there and there's plenty of room. Oh, okay. Okay. That's, That's what I do. I have the, I have the dust hog, you know what the dust hog is? Yeah, I did see that. I don't. Yeah, I don't have it on this video that I'm going to be showing yeah. here. So, so I, yeah. I have the dust hog that you know. So, like, yeah, when you pour it in, you get the, that that plume of uh, of of dust. I need to get that. I need to stop inhaling this stuff. I know. Yeah. Too. Oh no, you want on? Uh, I you put on a mask. I saw you put on. A I, mask yeah, on. I have. I've been a lot better. I've been a lot better. Yeah. But it's been it's yeah. decades of not doing that. Yeah. Um, so if you've got the dust talk, so like when I'm mixing thin set, I have a whale tail. You know what the whale tail yeah, is? Yeah, I've seen that. Yep, yep. Yeah. So I use a whale when I mix thin set, and you can mix it inside. There's no dust. Right. Because it gets yeah. sucked right into the vacuum. Right. Right. And then the, the you know, the whale tail doesn't work well on the ruby buckets because it's got a, 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 a wide rim. So then I use the dust hog, which just hooks over it. Okay. And that sucks all the dust out of, the, out of there, too. So you're not breathing it. Right. Right. And you're not and you're not contaminating that, you know, the room of everything house, else right? that you're doing. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. yeah right. Yeah. So I just I put a little video together of some of your mud bed work here. And definitely I mentioned it in my last video of uh, a great idea that makes it probably for any DIYer to do this, um, you know, if you have all your backer board up. So watch this little one minute video. This is uh, Sal's handiwork. And like I said, he's got. I don't even know. I looked up why I did your search query. I think you had like 80 some videos on mud beds and it was just unbelievable category of it. So I only, I only pulled a few here. here. There's always room for one more. <laughs> there is. That's true. <laughs> and I'm going to go straight from Dietra, straight back level from that corner to that corner level. And then from here to that level. And then I'm going to pitch it into the drain and I'm going to say, they're going to connect this drain afterwards. That's where I noticed how smooth it was. Okay. Yeah. So that's it. Board on. I didn't want to do that before I did the mud because everything would be fresh and I get it all over. So me. this this was actually a cobbler shower. What this one or the other no, one? The, the, the first one, the first yeah, one. Yeah, 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 I did notice that. Yeah. Yeah. But I even seen all this. I mean, this is like really nice and smooth. I mean, really um nicely done. Um so yeah, no, definitely. Uh, you can tell that you've done a lot of it. <laughs> yeah, one or two. For day two, the last piece. And so this is the idea I thought was brilliant. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What kind of and this is not my idea. idea. Someone yeah. told me. I'm not going to take credit for this. Yeah. Some I saw someone do it. And uh, did I say, see someone or this someone told me about it? And I'm like, this is a great idea. I have to share it. Yeah. So this, you know, I'm not going to take credit for this. Uh, as being my idea, but you know, share what you know, right? Right, absolutely. No, this would definitely make it a little bit foolproof in a way. It really gives you, yeah, you because know, you have yeah, a nice straight line there. You don't, you're not have, you know, there's nothing going to. You're not there. creating. See, when you're doing when you're doing a, a perimeter with your mud, you see this one here. This is all me because I put that that wood uh, uh, up against uh, the back and then yeah. I, I clear the screed. Right. Uh, but um, 
Yeah, this is like your little creative um, way of keeping that. Yeah, you got because I needed a flat pitch to the linear drain. Yeah, yep, yep. So, so the um, so this was like uh, the first. I think this this was a. I think just it said it was eight years ago. You put this. Yeah, this was an old one. And I remember yeah, seeing this. This was like the first video I saw of yours, and I was like, wow! Like it was really impressive the way you put it together. And I, I think I had just at that point had done some penny tile or some real small tile like this. And it was a freaking nightmare. It looked awful. <laughs> like they, they wanted, they, they actually wanted like a, a black or a gray grout over white. And it uh, just showed uh, all of my imperfections. So when I went online to try to, you know, I mean, this was eight years ago. I mean, YouTube was, you know, it's been around. And I actually see some of your stuff from 15 years ago, which is unbelievable yeah. um, on there. But uh, yeah, we don't, I, I don't talk about those videos. <laughs> But just the fact that it says 15 years ago, you were on YouTube 15 years ago. It's uh, yeah. fascinating. But I, when I saw you, how you installed us, like that was, I just, I was amazed. And uh, and I had gotten a lot of comments even when I was out bidding jobs. So yeah, guys, definitely, if you don't know Sal, you need to go to his channel and be able to check out all his stuff. Um, but yeah, I had a lot of customers always asking me, you know, I I see a guy on YouTube does this stuff and he would tell you, say your name and, and, I uh, check it out. So yeah, you were definitely, um, you know, uh, somebody that was noticed a long time ago on, on, on how to go about doing this stuff. So, yeah. I, I've been, I've been doing it for a while. That's for sure. Yeah. So, but yeah, uh, yeah a lot of great yeah. stuff. I think, yeah, I think that perimeter joint deal is definitely something that's uh, really good. Yeah. That uh, makes uh, it make, you know, something I've, you, I don't often use that because I don't need to. Right. Right. You know what I mean? But if you're having trouble getting a, a level perimeter, because, you know, it's easy that when you're looking at someone doing it, it's easy. You know, you tap it down and you move around and you tap it down and move around. Good. It's done. Right. Yeah. And then you put your level from one corner to the other and then you're out like a quarter of an inch. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So yeah. if you do that, right, you know, you're going to be perfectly, right. perfectly level all the way around. Well, I'll definitely after today's talk, I'm definitely going to change this to like two and a half to three quarts, maybe. Yeah. No, don't even do three quarts. Don't even do three quarts. Just two and a half. Don't do three quarts. You okay. know something? Put, okay. put two quarts in. Yeah. Right? And what I do is I put a little bit of water. When I mix it, I put a little bit in the bottom. And then I pour the mud in and then I put the rest on top. Okay. Okay. And then put two quarts in and then check it. And then if you need a little bit more, put a little bit more. Because you can always add more water. You can't take it out. That's right. Okay. Right? Okay. And you'll find if you do, if you do, if you make it a little drier, you're going to find that it's going to be a lot easier to work with. Okay. All right. Maybe I should just rip this out and do it again. See, hey, see how that's done. <laughs> no. No, that's <laughs> Well, great. no, there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. yeah. So I did put you in this course just showing the perimeter that's guys. Fine. And I have your, your video linked there. So. Um, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. So. I, I'll let you. <laughs> okay, thanks. <so. laughs> you know, you need to come out with a course. I'd love to share your. Uh, you know, I mean, obviously, you're you're you have so much stuff out there. I know you have some guides and. Um, well, you know what the problem with doing a course because I was actually considering doing it once, but it's so much work. It is. Yeah. And I, you know, I give you credit for doing what you do and putting all this stuff together and recording all this stuff. It takes a lot of time, a lot of patience. Yep. And yeah, it takes skill too. Just to you know the the um, the editing and all that other stuff that you're doing. Right. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So well, I can't yeah. believe it. we've already been over an hour and a half here. Uh, so oh, really? Yeah, I know. It's uh, you know I could talk to you all day about things. I'd love to have you on a on again on a different topic because I know you're a wealth of knowledge. Any, anytime, Steve. You know I'm going to see you at coverings. Yes, and, uh, we will next week. Next yeah. week. That's next right. week. So that's right. Make sure we, we get uh, get a chance to to say hello at Absolute, least. Absolutely. So, yeah. All right, Sal. So I'll call it an evening, and uh, yeah, we'll see you next week. It was so, fun, Steve. All right. We'll talk to you. Okay? Take care. Thank you. Bye. Bye.